high court sports betting rule. All things change for your business on the back of it? Oh, this is obviously a huge game changer. We have a whole product that we've been working on for almost a year. We're very excited to bring that to market and looking forward to having sports betting come this fall. And so you'd really lined yourself up to take advantage of this. You'd, you'd put your bet out there that this was going to get passed. Uh, it's exactly right. We did make a bet here. I think, you know, for us, the opportunity was too great to not be prepared. Even though we did make a bet and we didn't know what the outcome would be, we felt like the upside was so great that we had to make sure we were ready for it. And the um, day that we heard that the court had picked up the case, and, um, you know, I think within 24 hours we were in a strategy planning session and we were off to, off to the races on working on the product. What about the states that are off to the races? We're pretty sure that New Jersey will get going pretty swiftly, but where do you see the rest of the states starting to en enact this and make it legal to start betting on sports? Several have already passed laws, um, including Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and New York. Mm -hmm. I think they will probably, my guess is, although I don't know, they will probably try to make sure they have their regulations issued and are ready for NFL season. And I think the other states that are still in session that are considering the bill, uh, the bills that uh, would legalize sports betting, you're probably going to see at least a handful of those now that they know where the, courts, uh, uh, where the court landed. I think you'll see at least a handful of those try to get ready for NFL season as well. Is NFL the big winner here? What, what sports do you think are going to be the ones that are most bet on? I think NFL will definitely be a big winner. I think basketball, baseball, baseball is going to be a great sport for betting. Just, you know, everybody uh, talks about baseball having too many stoppages, but that's actually a huge plus if you're betting. And I think it'll really do a lot to keep baseball fans engaged throughout the game. I think golf, same thing, really conducive to betting, um, just given the way the pace of play goes. Uh, so I think those will be some of the big ones, but really every sport will benefit from this. How do you keep fans engaged? What, what, how do you change your product to really dine out on this? A lot of what we've built already is very applicable. Everything from the compliance systems to the AI systems that target based on sport affinity and other sorts of information we have on the customer. So a lot of that is just repurposing for sports betting. The product of sports betting itself will require some work for us to make sure we have the best in market. We think we're going to have a very competitive product day one, but it's a lot of innovation that's going to happen. And, I think what you're looking at today is not going to be what the products look like three years, four years uh, from now, so we're going to have to work hard there. But we do have the advantage of a built-in customer base, a brand, and a lot of technology that we've already built for fantasy sports that could be repurposed for sports betting. A lot of that technology, of course, built right here in Boston, Massachusetts. What about the state of Massachusetts? Do you think that there's not much talk of them embracing this as a change for, for gambling on sports? Do you think they should? Well, just yesterday there were comments from uh, Governor Baker, from Speaker DeLeo, indicating that this is something they'd want to take a look at. Uh, I think there's a good chance that it's at least discussed. We'll see if they do anything. But I think Massachusetts has really proven itself in a number of areas to be uh, very much a, a hub for technology, a rising hub. And I think there's a real opportunity here for them to take ownership of the sports technology uh, space and really be seen, you know, hopefully with us being one of the leading faces of that as a place that sports technology companies can find a home. Do you think that that's already been growing? Have you built an ecosystem to a certain extent? I mean, you've got a lot of talent based here and, and have other, has it brought other competitors to your front doorstep? It's definitely helped. I mean, I see a lot of new startups in the sports technology space and there's a lot of companies that we work with that have talked about potentially opening a Boston office. So I think it's helped, but really it's more the policymakers and just being very aggressive. And I think here is a great example of an opportunity they have to do the same thing. And um, there will be early movers, New York and others in the area. So important for Massachusetts to stay competitive. You were talking about artificial intelligence being something that you've already adopted. What, what are the other key areas of technology that you're driving forward on to make sure that you're a step ahead in terms of innovation? A lot of what we do is just so similar. Everything from the things I mentioned to taking payments, customer acquisition, um, a lot of that sounds like it doesn't have a huge technology underpinning, but it does. There's a lot of work that has to be done, for example, to process tens of thousands of transactions, payment transactions per minute in the moments before an NFL game starts when everybody's trying to get their deposits in. Uh, on the customer acquisition side, when you're running on dozens of different mobile networks and uh, you know, buying across many, many different channels, both offline and online, having a data environment and tracking systems in place to be able to measure and track all that stuff. There's a lot of underlying technology that we've built in those areas, and we're always adding to it as well. It's something that, you know, it's always changing, so we have to keep, uh, keep up to date with whatever the world is going. What about adapting your own company? Because it was well publicized, the FanDuel deal did unravel. How have you picked yourself up and moved forward from that, and do you see yourself remaining independent? 
I think so. I mean, you never know, but um, our plan has always been to try to go public at some point. Uh, you know, for us at the time, it was pretty disappointing news on the FanDuel merger, but it was also right around the time the Supreme Court announced the sports betting case. So I think that allowed us to really have something to rally the company around and focus people. And now that we got the good news yesterday, I think most people feel like it was probably for the best that that deal didn't end up getting approved. You wouldn't return to it? Never say never, but it doesn't seem likely. I think that, um, you know, my guess is that, uh, you know, we'll probably remain independent, but you never know. And what about the going public bit? When do you foresee that, in the next year or two? Um, we'll have to see how quickly the sports betting market develops, but I think if there's good traction there and we feel like there's enough stability for us to be a public company, then that's something we'd look at. But um, I think we're probably at least a couple of years away. And until that couple of years, what now? What's the focus? Is it always talent? I feel like every CEO tells me it's the war of talent, but where do you really apply your time? Talent is very important. Anytime you, you're, you're entering a new vertical, I mean, we're always looking for great talent, um, but especially when you're entering a new vertical, you need to bring on new people to help run that. We've made several hires in that area. Mm. Uh, we also, I think, are really, really focused on building a technology platform that's scalable across a number of different verticals. So we home grew most of our fantasy technology. I think the goal is to do the same thing with sportsbook. So to make sure that we have the best technology platform out there. And I think we have a very talented group of engineers, but they're all getting educated on the space as well. Um, you know, and beyond that, I think just continuing to work with policymakers to make sure that the industry is regulated, not just here in Massachusetts, but everywhere. It's done in a way that allows for innovation and allows for good product for, cus for consumers. And how do you grow geographically off the back of that? It's interesting that some of the companies that have seemingly had the most excitement from this are UK-based companies. We've got, in the UK, you see very regulation that is built to enable gaming to improve and, and a lot of leadership there in terms of technology. Where's the competition coming from and where do you start to enter? I think probably at least if things move as quickly as I hope in the U.S. on sports betting, we're going to have plenty to focus on state by state um, in the, at least the short term. Um, we're already operational in Europe, so we're not going to you know, stop, but I think as far as really that being a market that we focus on growing, uh, probably going to take a bit of a backseat in the short term to the states, but we'll see if it happens slower than people think state by state, then might be that we choose to, to look at the UK and um, we'll certainly continue to run the DFS product there. We'll be launching Australia shortly with the fantasy product. So we'll be in those markets, but I think the primary growth focus will be in the US. And how do you deal with the complexity of state by state? You know, that's what we're built to do. We're already doing it for fantasy sports. We're regulated in 19 states now, and we built systems that allow you to have really, really flexible uh, back-end and front-end infrastructure for every state. So um, fortunately, they're all similar enough that it's not complete rework, but we've also built it in a way that you can vary it, and um, we have great geo uh, geolocation software that allows us to tell where you're at. So um, just got to apply the right rules. Plan the right rules and plan the right business growth. DraftKings CEO, it's wonderful to have you. Jason Robbins, thank you for thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me.